tonight, Miss Julie is crazy again, perfectly crazy. So, you're back at last. I went to the station with the count and coming back, I went to the barn and danced. And then I discovered Miss Julie there leading the dance with the gamekeeper. When she spied me, she rushed right towards me and asked me to waltz. And then she waltzed, so <laughs> never in my life have I seen anything like it. Oh, she's crazy tonight. <laughs> she always has been. But never so much as in the last fortnight when her engagement broke off. Yes, what about that gossip? He seemed like a fine fellow, although he wasn't rich. Ugh. They have so much nonsense about them. It's queer when you think about Miss Julie, though, to prefer staying here at home with these people rather than going with her father to visit her relatives. Hmm? She's probably shamefaced about breaking it off with her intended. Oh, no doubt, but he was a likely sort just the same. Do you know, Christine, how it happened? I saw it, although I didn't let on. No. Did you see it? Yes, indeed, I did. They were out in the stable yard one evening, and she was training him, she liked to call it. Do you know what happened? <laughs> she made him leap over her riding whip the way you teach a dog to jump. He jumped it twice and got a lash each time, but then the third time, he snatched the whip from her hand and broke it into pieces, and then whew, vanished. No. Was that really how it happened? Yes, it's the way the damn silly. thing happened. <sighs> what have you got for me that's good, Christine? Hmm? Oh, no, it's just a, a a kidney that I cut off of a veal steak for you. Ooh, splendid. Splendid. Ooh, my favorite delicacy. But she could have warmed the plate you are fussier than the count and you get uh, started do not touch my hair you know how sensitive i am oh, you're there i was only loving it Ooh, beer on midsummer thank you but no i have something better than that old seal now Give me a glass, a wine glass, you understand, when one drinks the genuine. Heaven help the woman who gets you as a husband. Oh, There's talk. Such a fuss budget. You should be lucky to have a man such as I am. Mmm. Mmm. Excellent. Very excellent. Just a little too cold. Mm. Yeah. What are you cooking there that smells so infernally? Oh, it's some uh, devil's mess that Miss Julie must have for Diana. Miss Julie has a great deal of pride about some things, but not enough about others. Just like her mother in her lifetime, she thrived best in the kitchen or the stable, but she must always drive in tandem, never one horse. She would go about with soiled cuffs, but she had to have the Count's crest on her cuff buttons. And as for Miss Julie, well, she doesn't take much care of her appearance either. I should say she isn't refined. Why, well, just now, out there, she pulled the forester from on his side and asked him to dance with her. We wouldn't do things like that. But when the highborn wish to unbend, they become vulgar. Splendid she is, though. Ah, such shoulders. Ooh. Don't exaggerate. I've heard what Clara says who dresses her sometimes. I have. Ah, Clara, you women are always jealous of each other. I've been riding out with her. Such a dancer, too. Oh, now, Sean. Don't you want to dance with me when I'm through? Of course I want to. 
What's that promise? Promise? When I say I will do a thing, I do it. Thanks for the supper. It was excellent. I'll be back soon, but don't let things wait for me. Is it done? Have you secrets between you? Curious, saw you. Ooh, how sweet the violet perfume is. Incidents, do you appreciate perfumes too? Damn, that you can do splendidly. Don't look, away with you. Is this some troll dish that you're both concocting for Midsummer Night? Something to pierce the future with and evoke the face of your intended? To see him, one must have keen eyes. He can put it in a bottle and cork it tight. Come now, Jean, and dance a statue with me. <clears throat> I don't wish to be impolite to anyone, but this dance I promised to Christine. Well, she can have another. Isn't that right, Christine, what you lend on to me? Oh, it's, it's not for me to say. But if Miss Julie is so gracious, then it's not for me to say no. So. Go on. Be grateful for the honor. Well said. But not wishing any offense, I wonder if it is prudent for Miss Julie to dance twice in succession with her servant, especially as people are never slow to find meaning in such... In what? What sort of meaning? What were you going to say? Since Miss Julie does not understand, I must speak plainly. It may look strange to prefer one of your underlings to others who covet the same honor. Who prefer? What a thought. I, the lady of the house, I honor the people with my presence. And now that I feel like dancing, I want to have a partner who knows how to lead to avoid being ridiculous. As Miss Julie commands, I'm here to serve. Well, you mustn't look upon that as a command. Tonight we're all in holiday spirits, full of gladness, and rank is flung aside. So give me your arm. Don't be alarmed, Christine. I shall not take your sweetheart away from you.
crazy, I tell you, to dance like that. And the people stand grinning at her behind the doors. What do you say to that, Christine? Oh, didn't, didn't I say she was acting queer lately? Come now, Sean. Is it my turn to dance? You're not angry because I let myself be led by the forelock? No. No, not for such a little thing. You know well enough, and and I know my place too. You're a pretty smart girl, Christine. You ought to make a good wife. What a charming cavalier to run away from your partner. On the contrary, Miss Julie, I have hastened to my neglected one, as you see. You know, you can dance wonderfully well, but why are you in livery on a holiday evening? Go change immediately. Will you excuse me? My, my coat hangs there. Does it embarrass you to change your coat in front of me? Go to your room then, or I'll stay and I'll turn my back. With your permission, Miss Julie. Is Sean your sweetheart that he's so devoted? A sweetheart? Yes. May it please you? Sweetheart, that's what they call it. Call it. Oh. Oh, Miss Julie had herself a sweetheart. Yes, we were engaged. And, but it came to nothing. Voulez-vous plaisanter, mademoiselle? Et vous voulez parler français? Where did you learn that? In Switzerland, where I was a butler at the largest hotel in Lucerne. Oh, you look like a gentleman in that coat. Charmant. You flatter me. Flatter? My natural modesty forbids me to believe that you could mean these pleasant things that you say to such as I am, and therefore I allowed myself to fancy that you overrate, or as it's called, flatter. Where did you learn to use words like that? Have you frequented the theater much? I have frequented many places, I have. But you were born here in this neighborhood. My father was a deputy under the public prosecutor. And I saw Miss Julie as a child, although she didn't see me. No, really? Yes, I remember one time in particular, but I mustn't talk about that. Oh, yes, do you must. When was it? <laughs> no, really, not now. Another time, perhaps. Another time is a good for nothing. Is it really so dreadful then? Not dreadful, but it goes against the grain. Look at her. She'll make a, tar a charming wife. She snore too? No, oh, but she talks in her sleep. How do you know she talks in her sleep? I've heard her. Why don't you sit down? I can't allow myself to do so in your presence. But if I command you? Then I obey. Sit down then. <laughs> but wait, can't you get me something to drink first? Yeah, I don't know what there is in the ice box. Probably nothing but beer, perhaps. Is beer nothing? My taste is so simple that I prefer it to wine. Yes, I, uh, allow me. Well, won't you drink too? I'm no friend to beer, but if Miss Julie commands. 
commands. I should think that as a polite cavalier, you would join your lady. Well, in that case, you are quite right. Give me a toast. What, a man of the world and shy? To my lady's health. Bravo. Now kiss my shoe. Then the thing will be complete. Splendid. You should have been an actor. This shouldn't go any further, Miss Julie. What if someone should come in and see us? What harm would that do? simply that it would give them a chance to gossip. And if Miss Julie only knew how their tongues wagged just now, then... What did they say? Sit down now. I, I don't wish to hurt you, but they use an expression through hints of a certain kind, but you, you're not a child, if you can understand. When one sees a lady drinking alone with a man, let alone a servant at night, then... Then what? And for that matter, we're not alone. Christine is here. Sleeping, yes. Then I shall wake her. Christine! Christine, are you asleep? No. No. Um, Christine! I you could... certainly can sleep. No, I, I already polished the, the counts. But... And I, I put the coffee on. Christine, won't you wake up? Don't disturb the sleeping. What? Anyone who has stood over a hot stove all day long is tired when night comes. One should respect the weary. That's a kind thought, and I honor it. Thanks for the suggestion. Come out with me now and pick some syringas. With Miss Julie? With me? That wouldn't do, decidedly not. I, I don't understand you. Is it possible that you fancy that I... No, not I, but people. What? That I'm in love with a servant? I'm not presumptuous, but we've seen instances and with the people, nothing is sacred. I think better of the people than you do. Come on, try them. Come. Do you know that you're very strange? Perhaps. But you are too. <laughs> Everything is strange for that matter. Life, people, everything. Everything is wreckage that drifts along until it sinks, sinks. I have the same dream every now and again, and in this moment, I'm reminded of it. So I find myself atop a tall pillar, and I see no possible way of getting down. And I, I grow dizzy when I look down, but down I must. And I'm not brave enough to throw myself and I cannot hold fast and I long to fall but I don't fall and yet I can know no rest or peace until I should come down to earth and should I come down I would wish myself down into the ground have you ever felt like that No. I dream that I'm lying in a dark wood under a tall tree and I would up, up to the top where I can see far over the fair landscape where the sun is shining and I climb and I climb to the top where I can see the bird's nest and check them where the golden eggs lie but the tree trunk is so thick, it's so smooth, and the first limb is so high, but I know that if I 
reach that first limb, I should climb the zoana ladder all the way to the top. I haven't reached it yet, but I will, if only in a dream. Here I am talking about dreams with you. Come, let's go out just in the park. Oh. oh. What is it, something in your eye? Oh, nothing, just a speck. It'll be all right in a moment. Oh, it's some dust from my sleeve that brushed up against you. Now sit down and let me look for it. Oh. Sit still, perfectly still. Would you mind? Oh. I believe you are trembling, strong man that you are. In such arms. Miss Julie. Miss Julie. Tension Janesuka Nome. Will you sit still? There. Now it's gone. Kiss my hand and thank me. Miss Julie, listen to me. Christina's gone to bed. Will Kiss you please my hand listen first. to me? Listen to me. Kiss my hand first. Yes, but blame yourself. For what? For what? Are you a child of 25? Don't you know that it is dangerous to play with fire? Not for me. I'm insured. No, you're not. But even if you were, there is inflammable material in the neighborhood. Might that be you? Yes, not because it is I, but because I'm a young man. Oh, with a grand opportunity. What an inconceivable presumption. A, a Don Juan, perhaps, or, or a Joseph. On oh, my soul, I believe he's a Joseph. You do? Almost. Shame on you. That's serious or joking? Serious. Then you must have been serious a moment ago, too. You play too seriously with what is dangerous. Now, look, I'm tired. I may need to be excused and I may go on with my work. The Count must have his boots in time and it's long past midnight. Put the boots away. No. This is my work, which is my duty to do, but I was not hired to be your plaything. That I shall never be. Think too well of myself for that. In some things, on others. Were you ever in love? <laughs> we do not use that word. <laughs> but I have like many girls. One time I was sick because I couldn't have the one I wanted sick. You understand, like the princesses and the Arabian Nights who couldn't eat nor drink for love sickness. Who was she? Who was she? That you could not make me tell. Not if I ask you as an equal, as a friend. Who was she? It was you. <laughs> How extravagant. Yes, if you will, it was ridiculous. <laughs> That was a story I hesitate to tell, but now I'm going to tell it. <sighs> Do you know how people in high life look from the underworld? No, of course you don't. They look like hawks and eagles whose backs one seldom sees for they soar up above. I lived in a hovel provided by the state with seven brothers and sisters and a pig out on a barren stretch of land where nothing grew, not even a tree. But through my window, I could see the Count's Park walls with apple trees rising above them. That was the garden of paradise. 
And there stood many angry angels with flaming swords protecting it. But even with that, I and other boys found the way to the tree of life. Now you despise me. <laughs> all boys steal apples. You say that. You say that. But you despise me all the same. No matter. One time I entered the garden of paradise. It was to eat onion beds with my mother. Near the orchard stood this Turkish pavilion shaded and overgrown with jessamine and honeysuckle. I didn't understand what it was used for and I had never seen anything so beautiful. People passed in and out and one day the door was left open. So I sneaked in and beheld walls covered with pictures of kings and emperors and their red fringed curtains. Now you understand what I mean. I, I had never been to the castle and how my thoughts leaped and there they returned ever after. Little by little, the longing came over me to experience for once this pleasure of infant. I walked in and I was bewildered. <laughs> But then I heard someone come in. There was only one exit for the great bulk, but for me, there was another. So I had to choose that. Once out, I started to run, scrambled through a raspberry hedge, rushed over a strawberry bed, and I came to the rose terrace where I saw this figure with a white dress and white slippers and stockings. It was you. <laughs> I hid under a heap of weeds. Under, you understand, where the thistles pricked me. And there I laid on this damp, rank earth. I gazed at you walking among the roses, and I thought to myself, if it's possible that the thief of the cross could enter the gates of heaven and walk among the angels, how could it be that a pauper's child on God's earth can't go into a castle park and play with the countess's daughter. Do you think that all poor children would have such thoughts under those conditions? That all poor children? Yeah, yes. Of course. Of course. Must be a terrible misfortune to be poor. No, Miss Julia, dog may lie on the couch of a countess, a horse may be caressed by a lady's hand, but a servant. Yes. Yes, it, it is possible for a man to swing himself up in the world, but how often does that happen? <laughs> But to return to the story, do you know what I did next? I ran down to the mill dam and threw myself in with my clothes on and was pulled out and got a thrashing. But the following Sunday, when all the family went to visit my grandmother, I contrived to stay at home. So I scrubbed myself well, put on my best dollies such as they were. And then I went to church that I might see you. And I saw you. Then I went home. My mind made up to put a cut to myself. But I wanted to do it beautifully without pain. But then I happened to remember that an elderberry blossom was poisonous. And I knew where there was a big elderberry bush in full bloom. And I stripped it up its riches and made a bed of it in an open. Have you ever noticed how smooth and glossy oats are? As smooth as women's arms. Well, I got in, went down to the cover, fell asleep. And when I awoke, I was very ill, but I didn't die, as you see. What I wanted, I don't know. I, you were unattainable, 
but through the vision of you, I was made to realize how hopeless it was to rise above the conditions of my birth. Can you tell it well? Were you ever at school? Little, but I have read a great deal and gone to the theaters. And besides, I've always heard the talk of fine folks and from them I've learned the most. Do you listen to what we're saying? Yes, indeed I do. And one time I heard Miss Julie and the lady. What was it you heard? Hmm, <laughs> that's not so easy to tell, but I was astonished and could not understand where you heard such thing. Well, perhaps at bottom, there's not so much difference between people and people. Shame. We do not behave such as you do when we are engaged. Are you sure of that? It isn't worthwhile to play the innocent with me. I gave my love to a rascal. That's what they always say afterward. Always? Always, I believe, as I've heard the expression many times before under the same circumstances. What circumstances? Those we've been talking about the last Silence. time. I... I don't want to hear anymore. Well, then I beg to be excused so I may go to bed. Go to bed on midsummer night. Yes, for dancing out there with that pack has not abused me. Well, then get the keys to the boat and row me out over the lake. I want to watch the sunrise. Is that prudent? One would think you are afraid of your reputation. Why not? I don't want to be made ridiculous. I'm not willing to be driven out without references. Now that I'm going to settle down. And I feel I owe something to Christine. Oh, so it's Christine now. Yes, but you too. Take my advice. Go up and go to bed. Shall I obey you? For once in your life, for your own sake, I beg of you, night is crawling along. Sleepiness makes one irresponsible and the brain grows hot. Go to your room. In fact, if I hear rightly, the people are coming for me. If they find us here, then you are lost. I know they're people and I love them and they respect me. Let them come, you'll see. No, Miss Julie, they don't love you. They take your food and spit upon your kindness, believe me. I mean, listen to them. <laughs> listen to what they're saying. No. What are they singing? Something suggestive about you and me. Infamous. Horrible. And how cowardly. The pack is always cowardly. And in such a battle, one can only run away. Run away. Where? We can't get out. We can't go to Christine. Into my room. Necessity knows no law. You could depend on me. For I'm your real, genuine, respectful friend. I think if they found you there. I will turn the key and if they try to break in, I'll shoot. Come. Come. You promise? I swear. Mellom bakkar og berg ut med havet, hever nordmannen fenge sin heim. Bær han selv hever tuftene grave, og ser selv sine hus opp på deim. Han så ut på deg stein ut til strender, der var ingen som der hadde bygd.
Kalamba. Karabär är gud med havet, häver norrmannen fänge sin heim. Bär han själv häver tuften är grave, och ser själv sina hus upp på deim. You see them, you heard them. Do you think it's possible to remain here any longer? No, I don't. What's to be done? Why? Travel far away from here. Travel, yes. Where? Switzerland. The Italian lakes. You've never been there, have you? Is it beautiful? Oh, an eternal summer. Oranges, trees, laurels. What would we do there? I'll open a first class hotel for first class patrons. Hotel? That is life. You shall see now. New faces constantly, different languages, not a moment for boredom, always something to do day and night, the bell ringing, the trains whistling, the omnibus coming and going, and all the time gold pieces rolling into the till. That is, that's life. That's life and I. The mistress of the establishment, the ornament of the house, your looks and your manners, oh, sure success, colossal. You can sit like a queen in the office and set the slaves in action by an electric button. The guests line up before your throne and shyly lay their riches on your desk. You can't believe how people tremble when they get their bills. <laughs> I consult the bills and you can sweeten them with your most bewitching smile. <laughs> Let us go, get away from here now, immediately by the next train. All this is well enough, but Sean, you must give me courage. Take me in your arms and tell me you love me. Will. But I dare not again, not in this house. I love you, Miss Julie. Do you doubt that? No. Call me Julie. Between us, there can be no more formality. Call me Julie. I can't. There must be formality between us as long as we are in this house. There is the memory of the past, and there is your father, the Count. I have never respected anyone else more in my life. I need only to see his gloves sitting on the chair. Hmm. I feel my own insignificance. I, I can only see the bell in my head ringing and I start quivering like a horse. And, and now that his boots are standing right there, so stiff, I, I can't help but bow and scrape. I was not born to bow and scrape. There's character in me right here. If I only get a hold of the first limb, oh, you should see me climb. I'm a servant today, but next year I shall be a proprietor. In two years, a gentleman of income. Then off to Romania, where I'll let them decorate me and can bark you, can end account. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, in Romania, one can buy a title cheap, and so you, you can be a countess, just the same my countess. What do I care for all that which now I cast behind me? Say that you love me. Else what am I without it? I'll say it a thousand times afterwards, but not here. Above all, let us have no sentimentality now or everything will fall through. We, we must look at this matter coldly like sensible people. Now you sit there. I will sit right over here and we'll talk as if nothing happened.
you no feeling? I? No one has more feeling than I, but I can restrain myself. A moment ago, you could kiss my slipper, and now... That was then. Now we have other things to think about. Don't speak harshly to me. Not harshly, but wisely. When folly has been committed, commit no more. Count may be here any moment. Before he comes, our fate must be settled. So, how do my plans for the future strike you? Do you approve of them? They seem acceptable enough, but one question, for such an undertaking, a large capital is necessary. Have you that? I? Be sure I have my regular occupation, my unusual experience, my knowledge of different languages. That is capital that counts, I should say. But with all of that, you could not buy a train ticket? That's true. And for that reason, I'm looking for a backer who can furnish the funds. How can that be done at a moment's notice? As for you to say, if you wish to be my companion. Can't, as I have nothing myself. And the matter drops. And Things remain as they are. Do you think I could remain under this roof? Do you, do you think I would allow the people to point at me in scorn or that, or that I could ever look my father in the face again? Ever. Take me away from this, this humiliation, this dishonor. Oh my God. What have I done? Oh my God, what have I done? So you're beginning in that tune now. What have you done? What have you done? Same as many people before you. And now you despise me. I'm falling. I'm falling. Then fall down to my level. I'll lift you up afterwards. What, what strange power drew me to you this? The weak to the strong, the, the falling to the rising? Is this love? It's love. Do you know what love is? I? Yes. Do you think it's the first time? <laughs> what language? What thought? I am what life has made me. Don't be nervous and play the high and mighty. For now, we're on the same level. Look here, a little girl. Let's uh, have a glass of something extra fine. You get that wine. The cellar. My father's burgundy. What's the matter? Isn't good enough for the son-in-law? And I drink beer, I. That only goes to show that you have poor taste in mine. Beef. You intend to tattle. Oh, accomplice to a healthy. I've been intoxicated. Have, have I been walking in my sleep tonight? Midsummer night. The night for, for innocent play. Innocent, eh? <gasps> Their being on earth is miserable. Why are you after such a conquest? I mean, think of Christine in there. Don't you think that she has feelings too? I did. A little while ago, I don't anymore. Servant is a servant. It will whore is a whore. in heaven. 
end my wretched life. Save me from this mire that I'm singing into. Save me. Save me! I can't deny that it hurts me to see you like this. You wanted to die for me. In the open. Oh, yeah, that was, that was only talk. That is to say a lie. Oh, almost. I believe I read something of the sort in a newspaper about Chimney Sweep who made a deathbed for himself with syringa blossoms and wood bin. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's because they were going to arrest him for non-support of his children. You are such a... What better could I have hit on? One must always be romantic to capture a woman. Right. How you'd seem the eagle staff. And I suppose I was to be the first limb. And the first limb is rotten. I was to be the hotel sideboard. And I the hotel. The guest and allure guests and overcharge them. Oh, that'll be my business. All can be like a grid. To your own soul. Lackey servant, stand up straight when I talk to you. Don't you dare try to moralize me like that. Lackey, eh? Do you think you've shown yourself any finer than any maid servant tonight? Strike me, trample on me. I deserve nothing better. I have done wrong, but help me now. Help me out of this if there is any possible way. I don't care to shirk my share of the blame, but I, do you think anyone in my position would ever have dared to raise his eyes to you if you yourself had not invited it? Even now I'm astonished. And proud. Why not? Although I must confess, the conquest was too easy to be exciting. Go on, strike me again. No. Give me, rather, for what I said. I do not strike the unarmed, least of all a woman, but I can't deny that from a certain point of view, it gives me satisfaction to know that it is the glitter of brass, not gold, that dazzles us from below. That the eagle's back is gray like the rest of him. On the other hand, I'm sorry to have to realize that all I've looked up for is not worthwhile. And it pains me to see you fallen lower than your cook. As it pains me to see the autumn blossoms whipped to pieces by the cold rain and transformed into dirt. You speak as though you were already my superior. And so I am, for I can make you a countess, but you can never make me a count. I was born of a count that you can never be. That is true, but I can be the father of counts if- But you are a I... thief that I am not. There are worse things than that. And for that matter, when I serve in a house, I regard myself as a member of the family, a child of the house, as it were, and one doesn't consider it theft. If a, child, if a child scoops a berry from full bushes. Oh, Miss Julie, Miss Julie. You are a glorious woman, too good for such as I. You have been a victim of an infatuation. You want to disguise this fault by fancying that you love me, but you do not. Unless perhaps it's my outer self that attracts you. And then your love is no better than mine. But I cannot be satisfied with that. And your real love, I can never awaken. Are you sure of that? You mean, can we get along with such an arrangement? There's no doubt about my loving you. You are beautiful, you're elegant, accomplished, lovable. 
when you wish to be. And the flame you awaken in a man does not die so easily. They're like hot wine with strong spices in their lips. Leave me. Not to be one with death. How then? Not with caresses and beautiful words. Not by thoughts of the future. Save humiliation. Tell me how then exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I shrink from you as I would from a rat. But I cannot escape from you. Escape with me. Yes, yes. You must escape. I'm so tired. Can you glass of wine? We must talk, talk it all through. We, we still have a little time left, but this time I'll talk. Because up until now, you've done all the talking. Hmm. You've told me about your life, so tell you about mine. And then we will know each other through and through before we begin our wandering together. Hmm. One moment, pardon. I think well, rather, you won't regret having told your life secrets. Aren't you my friend? Yes, sometimes. Don't depend on me. <laughs> you only say that. And for that matter, I have no secrets. You see, my mother was not of noble birth. She was brought up with the ideas of equality. Women's freedom and all that. They had very decided ideas against matrimony, and when my father courted her, she declared she would never be his wife. But she did so for all that. I came into the world against my mother's wishes, I discovered. I was brought up like a child of nature by my mother. I, I was made to be an example of a woman being as good as a man. I was made to go about in boys' clothes and tend to the horses and harness and saddle and hunt. In fact, all over the, the estate, women servants were made to do men's work, which the result being us coming near being ruined. We became the laughing stock of the countryside. At which point my, my father must have awakened from his bewitched state where he revolted and, and started running things according to his ideas. And then my mother became ill. So what it was, I, I don't know, but she often had cramps and acted queerly, sometimes hiding in the attic or the orchard or Sometimes being gone all night. And came the big fire. Of course, you've heard of the house, stables, everything. Burned. Under circumstances that pointed strongly to an incendiary, being that the misfortune occurred the day after the quarterly insurance was due, and the premium sent by my father was strangely delayed by his messengers, but they arrived too late. Don't drink anymore. What does it matter? My father um, was utterly at a loss for where to get the money to rebuild with when my mother suggested that he borrow from a man who had been a, a friend in her youth. So 
a brick manufacturer here in town. My father made the loan, but he, he couldn't pay any interest, which surprised him. The house was rebuilt. Do you know who burned the house? Uh, her ladyship, your mother. Do you know who the brick manufacturer was? Your mother's lover. Do you know whose money it was? Just a moment. That I do not know. That was my mother. The counts, that is to say, unless there was a contract. There was no contract. Hmm. See, my mother had had some money she had not wished to have in my father's keeping, so she entrusted it to her friend. He kept it. Quite right, he held on to it. When all this came to my father's attention, he couldn't proceed against him, wasn't allowed to pay his wife's friend, and couldn't prove that it was his wife's money. That was my mother's revenge for his taking the reins of the establishment into his own hands. At the time, he was ready to shoot himself. Rumor has it that he tried and failed. Well, he lived it down, and my mother paid full penalty for her misdeed. This was five terrible years, as you can fancy. Yeah, I sympathized with my father, but I, I took my mother's part. I, I didn't know the true, the true circumstance. Through her, I, I learned to distrust and hate men. And I swore to her that I would never be a man's slave. You hate men, Miss Julie? Most of them. Sometimes when it's weak. They hate me? Excessively. I could see you shot. Like a mad dog. Exactly. There's nothing to shoot with. What shall we do then? We must get away from here. Travel. Hmm. And torture each other to death. Oh, no, to enjoy. A few days, a week, as long as we can, and then to die. Die? Silly. I think it's better to start the hotel. You, you don't want to die with me? I don't want to die at all, both because I enjoy living and because I regard suicide as a crime to him who's given us life. Then you believe in God. Yes, of course I do, and I go to church every other Sunday. But I'm tired and I'm going to bed. Do you think I would allow myself to be satisfied with such an ending? Do you know what a man owes a woman he hits? Mm. My apologies. I never want to owe someone anything. This is my reward for opening my heart to someone so unworthy with whom I've discussed my family honor. Dishonor, yes, I said it. Told you not to drink because then one talks too freely and one should never talk. I repent all of this, but if only you loved me. Oh my God, for the last time, what do you mean? Shall I weep? Shall I jump over a riding whip? Shall I kiss you, lure you to Lake Como? And then what, what do you want? What do you want anyway? This is getting tiresome. But that's, 
the way it is. Always. When you get mixed up with women's affairs. Miss Julie, I see that you're unhappy. I know that you suffer, but I can't, I can't understand you. Among my kind, there is no nonsense of this. We love as we play. When work gives us time, we haven't the whole day and night for it like you. You must be good to me and speak to me as though I was a human being. Be one yourself. You spit on me and expect me to stand it. Help me. Help me. <laughs> only, only tell me what to do and I'll do it. In heaven's name, if only I knew myself. Raven, I have been mad, but is, is there no means of delivering? Stay here at home. Say nothing. No one knows. Impossible. People know. And Christine. They don't know, and it could never suspect such a thing. It, it might happen again. Oh, that is true. And consequences? Consequences. What are my wits not to think of that? <clears throat> There's only one thing to do. Get away from here immediately can't go with you or they will suspect you must go alone away from here anywhere alone where i i can't you must before the count returns if you stay we know how it will happen if one has taken a false step it's likely to happen again and as the harm it's been done already and one grows more and more daring until at least all is discovered write the count afterwards and confess all except that it was I, that he could never know. And I don't think he'll be so anxious to know what it was anyway. I will go if you'll go with me. You raving again, Miss Julie running away with her servant. All the papers would be full of that and the Count could never live through that. I can't go, I can't stay. Oh, oh, man. oh dear. Command me. Set me in motion. Oh, oh, only I can't think. Act. See now what creatures aristocrats are. How do you bristle up and stick up your noses as though you were the lords of creation? <laughs> Very well. I will command you. Go up and dress yourself and see to it that you have traveling money and then come down. Go immediately. Gently to me, Sean. A command always sounds harsh. Feel it yourself. <sighs> My heavens, how it looks in here. What's been going on? Oh, uh, Miss Julie dragged in the people. Have you been sleeping so soundly that you didn't hear anything? Oh, I've slept like a log. And already dressed for church. Yeah. Didn't didn't you say you're gonna go to an early service with me? Yes, quite so. And there you brought my things. All right. What the? <clears throat> What's the text today? Saint John's Day. It is the beheading of John the Baptist. 
I'm afraid it will be a terribly long drawn out. That I don't look at me like that. I'm sleepy. Sleepy. What have you been doing up all night? You were actually green in the face. Been sitting here talking to Miss Julie. You do not know your place. Listen, Christine. It's clear about her when you think it over. <laughs> what is what is queer? Uh, I don't know, the whole thing. Uh, have you been drinking together, too? Yes. For shame. Look me in the eye. Yes. <clears throat> Is it possible? Is it possible? Yes, it is. <sighs> that I would have never believed. For shame. For shame. You're not jealous of her? No. Not of her. But if it had been Clara or Sophie, I would have scratched your eyes out. So that is what happened. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't understand that one. That wasn't very nice. Are you mad at her? No. But with you. That was bad of you. It was very bad. Poor girl. You know what? I don't want to stay in this house any longer where one cannot respect their betters. Why should one respect them, Christine? Yes, you could say that. You are so smart. But I don't want to serve people who behave so. I think it reflects on oneself. Yes, but it's a comfort to know that they're not a bit better than we, right? No, I, I, I don't think so. For if they're not better, how are we to better ourselves in this world? Think of the Count. Think of he who has had so much sorrow in all of his days. No, no, I don't want to, I don't want to stay in this house any longer. It was with the likes of you. It had been the lieutenant then. I'm sorry, what's that? Yes. He was good enough, be sure. There's a difference between people all the same. No, no, this, this I can never forget. Miss Julie, it's always so proud and so indifferent to men. One never would believe that she would give herself and and to the likes of you. She, who was ready to have Diana shot because she ran after the gatekeeper's mongrels. Yeah, I say it. And I won't stay here any longer. And on the 24th of October, I'm leaving. And then what? Well, as we've come to talk about it, 
high time you look for something else. Because we are going to get married. Well, what, what do I look for? A married man, could he get a place like this? Oh, of course not. But you could look for a gatekeeper's job. Or you could find some watchman's place in a factory. And the government's plums are few, but they're sure. And then the wife and kid would get a pension. And that, uh, That's all very fine, all that. But it's not exactly in my line to think about dying for my wife and children just now. I must confess that I have slightly different aspirations. 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 You have you have obligations. Think of those, you. Don't irritate me with talk about my obligations. I know my own business. We'll have plenty of time to talk about this some other day. Go get ready and, and we'll be off for church. Who is that listening? I don't know, unless it's Clara. It couldn't be the Count who's come home early, could it? Count? I can't believe that. No, he would have rung the bell. Never in my life have I been mixed up in something like this. I'm ready. Christine is about. Does she suspect anything? <sighs> she knows nothing, but good heavens, I you look. Why? You're as pale as a ghost. Uh, am I? Oh, the sun is rising. The sun. Sean, listen to me. Come with me. I have money enough. Plenty? Enough to start with. Go with me. I, I cannot go alone. Today, midsummer day, think of the, the train packed in with crowds staring at me and the, the long stops at the station when we should be speeding by. No, I can't. And then the memories. Childhood memories of midsummer day. The church decorated with birch branches and syringa blossoms and, and afternoons in the park with relations and friends and dancing and music and games and the flowers. One may fly, fly, but remorse and anguish follow in the baggage car. I'll go with you if we leave instantly before it's too late. Go and dress then. Have you there? It's only my canary. I cannot and I will not leave it behind. So we're like a bird cage with us. Are you crazy? Let go of it. It's the only thing I take from from home. The only living creature that cares for me. Don't be hard. Let me take it with me. Let go of the cage and don't talk so loud. Christine will hear us. No. I will not leave it to strange hands. I, I'd rather see it dead. Let go. I could fix the creature. Don't hurt it. No, I can't. Let go. I can. Little siren. Must I just part with you? Be so good as to not make a scene. Your welfare, your life is at stake. So quickly. You should have learned how to chop off a chicken's head instead of shooting a revolver. 
anyone swoon at the drop of blood. <laughs> kill me, too. Kill me. You who can butcher an innocent bird without tremble? Oh, I shrink from you. I curse the day I first laid eyes on you. I curse the moment I was conceived in my mother's oh. womb. Come now, what good is your cursing? Let's be off. No. No, I can't. Carriage passing. I think I can stand the sight of blood. You think I'm weak? I should like to see your blood flowing, your brains on the chopping block, all your sex swimming in a sea of blood. I believe I could drink from your skull, bathe my feet in your breast and eat your heart cooked whole. You think I love you because my life mingled with yours? You believe that I would carry my, your offspring under my heart, nourish it with my blood? Give birth to your child, take your name. Here, what is your name? What are you called? Because I am sure you have none. I would be Madam Gatekeeper or, or, or Mrs. Dumpheap. You dog with my collar on, you lackey with my father's hallmark on your buttons. <laughs> I play rival to my cook. <laughs> you think I'm cowardly? That I want to run? How I'll stay. Thunder may roll, my father will return, find his desk broken and to his money gone. <sighs> then he will ring that bell, then a scuffle with a servant, then send for the police, and then I will tell everything, everything! <laughs> It'll be beautiful to have it all over with. If only that was the end. My father, <laughs> he'll have a shock and, and die, and that will be the end. He will lay his sword across his coffin. Count's line is extinct. The serf's line will continue in the orphanage. Win honors in the gutter and end in prison. Now that's the king's blood talking. Splendid, Miss Julie. Christine, Christine, help me, help me against this man. What kind of performance is this for a holiday morning? And what does this mean, all this noise and... Oh. Christine, you are, you are a woman and my friend. Beware this wretch. The ladies are arguing, I'll go shave myself. You must understand me, you must listen to me. <laughs> what about? I can't understand all of this bosh. Listen to me, Christy. Where are you going in your traveling hat? And he, his coat, I... Hey! Listen to me, and I will explain everything. I don't want to know anything. You must listen to me. What about... Is it that foolishness with Jean? No, that I will not get mixed up in, that, you know, but if you're going to try and lure Jean to sneak out with you, then we have to put a stop to it. Try to be calm now, Christine. And listen to me, see, see, I can't stay here, and Jean can't stay here. Now, that being true, we must 
big fat Christy. I have an idea. What if, what if the three of us should go abroad, travel, and to foreign parts, to, to Switzerland, and, and set up a hotel there? I, I have the money, you see, and, and Jean and I would back the whole thing, and you could run the kitchen. Wouldn't that be fine? Just say yes, and, and everything will be arranged. Just say yes. Oh, you, you leave never having been out and, and traveled. Christine, you shall, you shall see the world. And you, you can't imagine how pleasant it is traveling on a train. New, new faces continually, new, new countries. And we'll, we'll go to, to Hamburg and, and passing through, we'll see the zoological gardens and you'll like that. And then we'll go to the theaters and the operas and then we'll, we'll go to Munich where they have museums with, with all the great painters, you know, the Raphaels and Rubens and, and you've heard of Munich where, where King Ludwig lived, the, the king who went mad and we'll see his palace, a, a palace like those in the sagas. And then from, from there, it isn't far to Switzerland. And the Alps with the Alps with, with snow in midsummer, mind you. And and there are oranges and laurels green if and and there we'll we'll take a hotel and and I'll sit taking the cash while Jean greets the guests and goes out and markets and writes letters and and that will be life you may believe and then then the train whistles and the omnibus comes and then the bell rings upstairs and then in the restaurant and then then I make out the bills and and I can salt them and and you can't even think of how people tremble when they receive their bills <laughs> and and you you can sit like a lady. Oh, oh, you won't have to stand over a stove. You can you can dress finely and neatly when you present yourself to the people. And you with your appearances, I'm I'm not flattering. You you could catch a husband, a, a fine Englishman, and, and they're not hard to catch and and we'll be rich and we'll build a, a, a villa out by Lake Como, and to be sure, it, it, it rains sometimes, but <laughs> uh, the sun must shine sometimes too, although it, it seems dark. And, and if not, then we can just travel homeward and come back here or some other place. Listen, does, does Miss Julie really believe all of this? Do I believe it? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't believe in anything anymore. Nothing. Nothing. So, so you intended to run away? Run away, that's putting it rather strong. You heard Miss Julie project. I think it might be carried out. <laughs> now listen to that. And was it meant that I should be her cook too? Be so good as to use proper language when you speak of your mistress. Mistress. Yes. No. No, listen to him. Yes, you listen. You need to and talk less. Mr. Lee is your mistress and you are 
same reason that you do not respect her now, you should not respect yourself. I have always had so much respect for myself. That you've never had any left for others. I have never lowered my position. Let anyone say, if they can, that the Count's cook is not at anything but a riding master of the swine herd. Let them say it. Yes, you happen to get a fine fellow. That was your good luck. Oats from his table. Is it for you to say anything who could take a commission on all the groceries and bribe from the butcher? Hmm? What was that? And you can't have respect for your master and mistress any longer. You. You. You going to church today? Because you could use a real good sermon for your actions. No, I'm not going to church today. You can go ahead and confess your own doings. Yes, I shall do that. And I shall return with so much forgiveness that there will be enough for you, too. Mm -hmm. Savior suffered and died on the cross for all of our sins. And when we go to him in faith and repentant spirit, he takes our sins on himself. Do you believe that, Christine? It's my life's belief. And it was my child's his belief ever since my youth, Mr. Uy. And where sin overflows, their mercy overflows too. If only I had your faith. Yes, but it's not allotted to all that. It's not given without God's particular grace. You are the chosen. Well, that's the great secret of the kingdom of grace. And God has no respect for persons. But there, the last shall be the first. Then he has respect for the last, the lowliest person. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's just the way it is, Miss Julie. However, it seems I'm going alone. And on my way, I will tell the stable boy not to let any horses out, just in case someone tries to leave before the Count comes home. <laughs> Goodbye. The devil. Not on the count of the confounded canary. You don't speak of the canary. Do you see any way out, any end to this? No. What would you do in my place? In your place. Wait, are you? As a noble lady, a woman, fallen. I don't know. Yes, now I know. Yes, I should not do it, Mark you, for there's a difference between us. Because you're a man and I'm a woman. What other difference is there? That very difference of man and woman. I want to do it.
my father couldn't either the time when he should have. No, he was right not to do it. He had to avenge himself first. Now my mother avenges herself through me. Haven't you loved your father, Miss Julie? Yes, deeply. I'm sure I probably hated him too without realizing it. I, mu I must have. It's due to my father's teaching that I've learned to scorn my own sex. Between them, I'm, I'm half man, half woman. Whose is the fault for what happened? My father's? My mother's? My own? I have nothing of my own. Not, not a thought that wasn't my father's. Not a passion that wasn't my mother's. And lastly, from my betrothed, the idea that all people are equal. And for that, I now call him a wretch. How can it be my own fault then? Throw the burden on Jesus like Christine did? No. I'm too proud and too intelligent thanks to my father's teaching and that a rich man cannot enter heaven. That is a lie. And Christine, who has money in the savings bank, she surely can never enter there. Who's the fault? What, is this, what does it concern us whose fault it is? I, I, I'm the one who bears the burden. The consequences. Yes. Count has returned. You think if Christine has oh he's seen the hello. Yes. It is John, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Right away, sir. Immediately. In a half an hour, sir. Yes. What did he say? <laughs> In God's name. He wants his. He wants his. Boots and coffee in a half an hour. In a half an hour, then. I'm so tired. I'm incapable of feeling. Not able to be sorry. Not able to go. Not able to stay. Not able to live. Not able to die. Help me now, command me. I will obey like a dog. Do me this last service, save my honor, save, save his name. You know what I have the will to do and cannot do. You will it and command me to execute your will. I don't know why, but I can't either. I I don't understand myself. It's absolutely as though this coat right here does it. But I, I can't command you now. And, and since the count spoke to me, I can't account for it either. But uh, oh, I it's it's this damn servant on my back. I I believe if the count came in here now and told me to cut my throat, I would do it on the spot. <laughs> make believe that you are he and I you. Oh, you could act so well a little while ago when you knelt at my foot, then you were a nobleman. Or haven't you ever been to the theater and, and seen the hypnotist? And he, he says to his subject, he says, take the broom and he, and he takes it and he says sweep and he sweeps. Yes, but the subject must be asleep. I sleep already. The whole room is like smoke before me. You, you're like, like a tall black stove. 
like a man clad all in black. Your eyes gleam like the embers when the fire is dying. And your face is, is a white spot like fallen ash. It's so warm. And good. So bright. And quiet. Go now while it's bright on the hayloft and now I go to rest. But tell me this first. The foremost may receive the gift of grace. Say it if you, if you don't believe it. The foremost, no, I... You are no longer of the foremost. <laughs> Wait, this, you're of the lowliest. That's true. I am the lowliest. <laughs> the lowliest of the lowly. Tell me once more that I must go. No, no, I cannot either. I can't. I can't. <laughs> and the first shall be last. Don't think. You take my strength from me too so that I become cowardly. What? I, I thought that was... <sighs> I thought that was the bell. <laughs> no. <laughs> To be afraid of the sound. But it, it's not the bell, it's someone behind the bell. The hand that sets the lull in motion and something else that sets that land in motion. But stop your cars, stop your ears. Then he will only ring louder. And keep on ringing until it's answered. And then it's too late. And then the police come. And then there's <sighs> it's a terrible thing. It's horrible. But there's no other way. <sighs> Go. Mellom bakker og berg ut med havet, hever normannen fenget sin heim. Der han selv hever tuftene grave, og ser selv sine hus opp og deim.